So I figured, what better way to end the month than with yet another Halo video. Another positive Halo video. Because we're in a very positive state when it comes to the Halo franchise at the moment. And I just wanted to dedicate one last video to it for at least the moment because I'll be honest here. Outside of news, I have no ideas or inspiration or any desire to make Halo content anymore. There's Flood Firefly and the other games being added to the server browser, which I could have done gameplay about, well, recorded gameplay for, but I, I didn't care enough to. It was fun, but not, not something I was interested uh, enough in recording. In fact, David Buggy and I were planning on recording some videos involving that, but neither one of us had the motivation for that. And then you look at the TV show and how they've been handling that, which I feel like it's good for you, but going off what I've seen and just how everything's panned out, it, it just doesn't seem to be for me, I'll put it that way, you know, so I don't sound as negative. And then there's Infinite, which is supposed to be the newest main entry game, which everything's already been said about that, so I'm not going to be even get to that, but the point being is that at this point, Halo as a franchise, as a brand, has just become so tainted and it's just, it's never been more clear that the focus of the, uh, of the franchise is not to pump out great games with actual support and launch complete and finish, but instead Halo is meant to be a brand which simply exists to make as much profit as possible, being that it is a brand, which that's the point of most franchises, for being honest. I mean, whether it's, again, the show, whether it's toys, cookbooks, whatever, that, that's just what it comes down to, which I was, I was thinking of doing a cookbook video, but that along with the TV show content I was planning, I just don't have the, the, the want or need to do that anymore, so don't, don't expect that, I'll just leave it at that. It's just very apparent to me, and what I'm trying to get at with this video is just, it's very clear that anyone who's in charge of the series, and I talked a bit about this in the previous live stream and the video before that, no one in charge of Halo gives a single shit about the series. No one does, because if, if they did, if Microsoft's higher-ups and 343's higher-ups did, then the franchise would be in a far better place right now than it is at the moment. And to have been watching the um, Xbox documentary that had been uploaded to the Xbox YouTube channel December of 2021, and seeing how they put so much importance in making Halo stand out and be the game that you want to buy an Xbox system for, contrasting that with how Infinite's been treated, it's crazy to see just how much priorities have completely shifted in regards to the series. And with all the different franchises Microsoft has now in regards to specifically first-person shooters, it makes sense as to why they really wouldn't feel the need to put all their eggs in that Halo basket anymore like they used to because even from 2012 to I, I guess 2015, maybe 2019, just somewhere around the 2010s, even then with how Halo is being treated throughout that decade, it was still clearly a focus for Microsoft, which that's something else I really want to get into in this video. What is up with Microsoft and some of their studios? Because you look at how games like Gears, Halo, uh, uh, some of these franchises have been handled and it makes you wonder what's up with the studios. Granted, it's, it's not all of them. Um, the Forza teams seem to be doing pretty well from what I've seen, so it makes you wonder what are they doing in, char in terms of managing these, these franchises. And in the case of Halo, going back to that, I think a part of it is, no, I'm sure a part of it is being that Bonnie Ross, who is one of the higher ups at 343, is also the VP of Xbox. Y you connecting the dots? I it makes sense. I mean, she had a pretty prominent spot in terms of people speaking about uh, the history of Xbox in the documentary, so she she's definitely been around for some time and I mean, that says it in the dates, and because of that, I'm sure that there's definitely bias in regards to, I keep saying in regards to, but um, d definitely bias with who they have in charge of what, which I mean, that's going to happen a lot in, in companies like this. And the problem with that is, 
when it leads to poor results such as the handling of post launch support for infinite so obviously i can't speak for, from a 343 or microsoft perspective i can only speak from the perspective of a consumer and from the perspective of a consumer what i see is a poorly handled franchise which just going back to the whole brand point ultimately what it comes down to is just that and see that's something else i want to say actually w with also in regards to old halo halo originally wasn't supposed to last beyond combat evolved bungie didn't even want to make halo 2 and 3 uh, until Microsoft made them do it and then from there they, they signed a deal for ODST and Reach and that's when they were finally able to move on to making Destiny. Yeah, which, you know, the whole point of making Destiny was to have freedom away from a publisher until they signed with Activision and, you know, events happened, occurred from there. And then they got away and independent again until they got purchased by Sony. But, you know, that's that's a whole different story. Anyways, as much as Bungie definitely did have passion when it comes to the old Halo games, that much is very apparent with games such as 2 and 3. At the same time, knowing that they didn't even want to do this originally, outside of the passion, they, they had no want or need to work on the series. They, they did what they needed to and they got out. And I imagine there's this part of them that probably thought, and I imagine that many of the people in the studio probably thought, once we're done with this franchise, someone else is gonna have to take on the reins, but I feel like they knew that no one else was gonna do it like they could. Unless, of course, they were to hire the right studio or put together the right studio, but when your studio consists of people who hate the Halo series and straight up prevents Bungie employees from working on the games, it makes sense as to why their games, 343's games, aren't up to snuff like Bungie's was. I mean, they, they had a, a traditional game looking good for Halo 4, and it's like any time they, they get told they should change this, they figure, what's that? People like this change, they think we should do this? Yeah, no. No, we're gonna do what we want. But even if that leads to a bad long-term effect for 343's games, as long as they make good um, short-term profit, that's all that matters, because as much of a mess as these games have been in the hands of 343, they've still made plenty of money back, and that's what it comes down to, pleasing the investors, you know, the shareholders. And so long as they can get in those initial holiday sales, which is what they did with Infinite, I don't believe exact numbers were shown, but if numbers were in fact shown, they'll pop up on the screen. That's, that's enough for them. So now they're doing the bare minimum in regards to post-launch support for Infinite because that's as much as they need to do. They're probably figuring, hey, we're making more than enough from microtransaction sales to the whales, so what's the point of doing more than we're required to, than we're obligated to? As bad of a setup as we have with all these contractors and not enough developers and this whole mess with people coming in and out and possible engine problems, which that's been... There's been plenty of leaks and rumors about that. Even if that's the case, so long as we keep telling the community, hey guys, don't worry, we're good, fist bump, and then proceed to gaslight and say it's their fault because they don't understand priority zero, then we'll get away with it, no problem. And that's what it just comes down to. But yeah, point being is, Bungie probably had the feeling, and you know, obviously I can't speak for him, but this is just what my gut is telling me. We, we know this series is probably fucked. I mean, at the end of the day, it's meant to be, again, it's a brand. Microsoft wants to capitalize on that, and so long as they can put, as long as they can put together games good enough, and it's good enough for the short term, that's, that's what's gonna matter to the most. And it's just crazy seeing, seeing how uh, the head of Xbox, Phil Spencer, is all about the games, the games, the games, which he's done plenty of work having to do with that, with all these new studios and acquisitions, but maybe he's focusing s so much on these other games that he's not focusing enough on the ones that got them to where they're at in the first place. And for what I've seen, Microsoft seems to really give their studios a lot of creative freedom, but perhaps in the case of 343, it's a bit too much. I mean, if the 2020 gameplay presentation wasn't a big enough wake-up call, if MCC's initial launch in 2014 wasn't enough of a wake-up call, if the backlash to Halo 5's campaign wasn't enough of a wake-up call, if the handling of Infinite at this moment isn't, then what is going to be? It's gonna be nothing until the series is put in the hands of a competent development studio. And that's just the bottom line. And as of now, it just, th there's nothing happening that's really suggesting 
that we should get our hopes up for the foreseeable future. I think that perhaps in the future, Halo could be in a better position because things can only go so low before they have to eventually go back up. That's just how things work in life, you know? There's gotta be a balance of shit's gotta reach such a low point where it has to just go back up because that's the only direction available. And I, I wonder, is Halo at this point going through its absolute low point with being handled for greed over you know, passion, and will we see that passion begin to have some effect on the series again within the future? I mean, we're seeing in some form that type of love with MCC and other means, but with Infinite itself, it's just, it's not enough. And I can't be mad anymore. I can't be annoyed, frustrated anymore. I just fully accept it for what it is. I mean, in hindsight, not even with just Infinite, but with Halo for years now. 343 has just never been that. They've done some things right. I gotta give them credit there, but all in all, they've they've messed up so much that it just completely overshadows the good that they've done. To fumble so many times and to be back and forth on them as much as I have over the years, I just fully accept now more than ever. It's just, it is what it is with them. And Halo, it's just, you know, it's that. They, they're doing what they need to do. You know, if they really did care, and Halo was meant to be in a better spot right now, then it would be, but it's not. And at this point, if you were to think that 343 wants to kill Halo, maybe at one point I would have disagreed, but now I genuinely could not agree more. Because what other studio that cares about a franchise that they're working on treats this franchise like how they're treating it? Of course, it's not the actual individual developers. They're putting all their heart and passion into this. This is their job. And I'm sure that there's plenty of people, at least some people who, even with the whole anti bungee sentiment, I'm sure plenty of developers throughout 343's history have cared. It's just a lot of them got pushed away simply because of the incompetent management in terms of how the studio runs things. And as for what the future of the series is, well, it's looking like at this point, it's just two maps, one for arena, one for a big team battle once every six months, once every new season when that pops up. But aside from that, it's like th there's nothing. And it sucks because going into this game, I really, really wanted to cover infinite seasons and give reactions to new trailers going up. I wanted to cover all the new content videos and do a lot of gameplay stuff. But that that's that's... That's all dead. And in hindsight, things like this are the reason why I'm so thankful I didn't stick to just one specific franchise with this channel. Like, had I decided to go down the route of Halo channel only when I started this shit, I'd be fucked right now. But I'm happy that I had the foresight to avoid doing that. And I would definitely say it's only benefited the channel more than it's hurt it. Granted, it hasn't been a perfect way of doing things. I've definitely been far from that word, but I'm, I'm feeling, I'm feeling good with it nonetheless. So, in terms of Halo content going forward, we'll, we'll see. Just don't expect a lot of it. There's a lot of other series I want to do, especially now with Modern Warfare 2 being announced. I gotta say, I'm, I'm feeling good about this game. I haven't felt that way about COD in a while, but I'm feeling good about this game. And with that being said, that's where I'm gonna end this talk video. It sucks, you know. Halo is just, it's a soulless brand. It's a tainted soulless brand. The flood came to life and devoured everything that was once passionate about the series, is the way I see it. I mean, yeah, that's that's perhaps a, a little hyperbolic, but you get my point. So, that's gonna be the end of the talk video. What do you guys think? Uh, how, how are you feeling about Halo? You feel the same as me? Different? You somehow still have hope, which, you know what? Good for you. Uh, I hope you enjoy. And that's going to be it. I'll see you all next time. But until then, I'm out. Later.